Kerry Metro Park. Thank you for joining me again for part of our video program series. Today we're going to be outside for a short bit. I'm going to be doing a little bit of bird watching, and if you're not really sure how to get started on that, I've already done two videos. I've got one video on how to set your binoculars so they can work best for you. I've got a second video on the basics of bird identification. Today's video is putting it all together, so I'm out here in the field at the park, and I'm going to be keeping a short checklist of some of the birds that I've seen for about 15 minutes or so. It's what bird people call a point count, where you basically stand there and you count every bird around you every way you can, whether you see it, whether you hear it. I'll be here for about 15 minutes, and absolutely not, you're not going to sit here and watch this video for 15 minutes of me looking at birds. I'm just going to take the numbers down, do some quick editing, so you don't have to watch me do this. Then we're going to head inside, and I'm going to show you where I'm going to put my numbers. There's this fascinating website out there. It's called eBird. And eBird is actually a project that's led by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And the idea is very simple. Anybody in the world can take their information in the field and put it into this global database of bird records. And it doesn't matter where you are. You can be at Lake Erie Metro Park, the coolest place in the world. You can be in your backyard. You can be in the middle of the ocean. It doesn't matter where you are. All your records have value. I've been e-birding for a little while now. It's just getting better and better and better. So step one, we're going to identify our birds. Step two, I'm going to show you how you can get going on eBird. You're going to love it. So I'll see you in about 15 minutes. All right, everybody, we're back. Thanks for sticking around. I've been out here for 15 minutes. And in the 15 minutes, I managed to score, believe it or not, 18 species of birds. I'm pretty pleased with that. I haven't gone anywhere. I've been staying here the whole time. So you're probably wondering what it is I'm holding here. Uh, it's a pad of paper. It's a little primitive, but it still works, right? So I've got my tally right here, and the idea is very simple. We're going to head inside, and we're going to take this information, and we're going to put it into the computer, and we're going to send it off to Cornell where it can be integrated into the eBird database. Now you're probably wondering, Paul, why are we putting the numbers on a piece of paper? Can't you do this with your phone? Well, of course you can, but I'm shooting this video with my phone, and once the information is in the phone, there's no way for you to follow along with me. So we're going to head inside, and we're going to take this information and send it in through their website instead of sending it to them through the smartphone. In the end, the data ends up in the same place and it works out just fine. But by doing it my way, this way, you get to follow along and participate in the process. So we're gonna head inside, I'll meet you inside, and we'll get these numbers out there for the whole world to see. See you in one minute. So we're inside and we're now on the home page for eBird. The address is simply eBird.org. Simply put, this is one of the most incredible citizen science databases in the world. Um, I want to draw your attention over here to the upper right hand corner. You've got two options. One is to create the account and the other is to sign in. Right from the get-go, let me be clear, you cannot submit information to eBird if you don't have an account. You have to generate an account before they will take any of your bird records. So creating an account is very simple. It's the name, the password, the sort of things that we've done a thousand times. Once you're in, once you've signed in or generated your account, it brings you to a different page. And in this case, it starts to generate some of my statistics. One option that you can do without creating the account is to come to this explore function right here. And I want to poke around with that for just a moment and to show you how incredible it is. So you can explore the species, you can explore regions, you can explore hotspots. So I want to show you something really quick here. This morning, I found a killdeer 
on my uh, bird survey. So if you put kill deer into the search function, you get all the beautiful photographs and identification tips and that sort of thing. But one of the things that really blows your mind is the range map. I like to click on the large map so I can see it better. And then I like to come up here to the zoom tool and you get your little crosshairs and you make a box over any corner of the world you want. But in the case of Killdeer, I'm going to come into Southeast Michigan. And if you start to see all these blue and red pins showing up, these are all Killdeer records that have been submitted by fellow eBirders. If it is a red pin, it is within the last 30 days. If it's a blue pin, it is older than a 30-day record. So when you start to think of all the different bird species that you want to explore, where can you find them or when can you find them, this explore function on eBird is absolutely mind-blowing. It's incredible what you can find. You can also start to look for things based on regions. So I like to explore the hot spots, so we'll click that. And I'm gonna use the same zoom tool. And basically what these color code means is this. If it's more red than blue, there's more hot spots in that given area. So I'm gonna come over here to the southern reaches of Michigan. And as I start to zoom in towards Lake Erie Metro Park, you can see that we actually have a pin that's a little bit more red than orange, and it turns out Lake Erie Metro Park has 262 different species that have been recorded. You click on it, you can start viewing details, you can start submitting data, you can start seeing what other people have seen at Lake Erie Metro Park. So with this function of exploration, you can go anywhere on the planet. It really doesn't matter. Pick a species or pick a region and just start poking around and seeing what you could find. This whole video here is all about basically our submission of data. So let's get to that. Now, once you have been an eBird for a while, it basically keeps track of all your locations. So I'm just going to scroll down the list of my locations. Everything's alphabetical and I'm going to find Lake Erie Metro Park right there. If you've never been to the location, there's other ways for you to get to that hot spot. You can start selecting cities. You can start selecting latitude and longitude. But I've been to Lake Erie Metro Park a few times, so it's already on my list. I click continue. Now it wants to know what we were doing and where we were doing it and when we were doing it. So we're going to say March, and today's date is the 27th. And our birding style, our observation type, I was stationary. I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't driving or walking. I literally stood there on a dirt road looking at birds. When did I start? I started at 1030 in the morning. And the system's going to need to know a.m. versus p.m. So it was 1030 a.m. And the duration, I was only there for 15 minutes. How many people in the party? Party of one. Click continue. This is all the birds now that Lake Erie Metro Park's checklist could have. Um, so there's two ways to go through this list. You can start going through it in what's called taxonomic order, which is the order that the birds would be found in field guides. But if you're not familiar with taxonomic order, you can actually come over here and click on alphabetical and everything is exactly that. It's in alphabetical order. I like taxonomic order. It helps me keep my notes more straight. So then it's a simple matter of just entering your data. One Canada goose, three mute swans, two wood ducks, two blue winged teal, four mallards, two red breasted mergansers, two pied billed grebes. One killdeer, and there's the killdeer I noted a moment ago. Now, 100 uh, ring billed gulls. That's a lot of gulls, and that was an estimate. 
There was a lot of gulls in the park that morning. One double-crested cormorant. One great egret. One turkey vulture. Get down here towards the woodpeckers. One red-bellied woodpecker. One northern flicker. Tree swallows. I had two. American robin. One. Red-winged blackbirds. We're a marsh. We should have plenty, and we did. I tallied 45, and I had one common grackle. So there's my list. That's what I saw during my 15 minutes. And then if you look right over here, it wants to know, are you submitting a complete checklist? And they really want to know yes or no, because they want to know that you put in all the effort for this official survey. That's what you did, or what I did. It's officially a scientific survey. So yes, I identified everything I could. I tallied everything I could. I pushed submit, and there's my checklist. So now this checklist is now basically immediately available to the entire world. I can start backtracking now. So I can start saying, well, I need to know more about a great egret. Notice it's in blue. It's a link. I click great egret, and now I'm on the egret page. It's really that simple. Now, you're probably thinking, well, can't you do this on the phone? Well, yeah, you can, but I can't show it to you. So what I wanted to do was show it to you with the data input through the laptop computer. If I come back up here to explore and I come over here to hotspots and I grab my zoom tool again and I come over here to Southeast Michigan and I click on Lake Erie Metro Park view details. You can actually see all the birds that people have been sighting over the last few days. It's really, really, really quite incredible software. So thank you very much for joining me. A couple things to think about before I let you go. Uh, one, definitely take some time and poke around on eBird. The way they have the website set up, it may look intimidating at first, but it's really not. Once you poke around and look through some of the links and see how they've got them connected together, you'll see that submitting information as well as retrieving information is actually very, very, very straightforward. Something else to consider, point number two, would be this idea of birding. Just as a friendly reminder, you get out of it what you want. So if you want to be the birder who travels the world, great. You want to go sailing the oceans looking for birds, great. You want to sit on your deck and look at the birds coming to your feeder, that's great too. Nobody can really tell you you're doing it wrong. You put into it what you want to get out of it. It works out really well, I think. Something else to think about, point number three, when you collect your checklists, and you push that submit button and you've entered your bird lists into eBird, you are now in a family. It's really that simple. It is a global community of people who are passionate about birds. You now get to stand shoulder to shoulder with people who may be a lawyer and a birder, or a school teacher and a birder, or a doctor or a mechanic it doesn't matter. None of that stuff really applies anymore when you enter the world of birding. Everybody appreciates the birds and that's what brings them all together. And the opportunity to contribute this sort of information right potentially from your backyard or front yard is really incredible if you think about it. Binoculars and a way to identify your bird and you're good to go. You think about it, you don't really get to do that with a lot of other activities, do you? You're never going to hear the story about the scientist who has the plutonium lab in their basement as a hobby. It doesn't work that way. Bird watching, on the other hand, that's exactly how it works. You can do it right there in your own yard. You really can't beat that if you think about it. 
So thanks again for joining me. And if you have any other questions, don't forget we have the Ask Kevin segment. Send in those questions. We'll get back to you. We promise. All right? So have a great day, and we'll see you again next time.